Hey everybody, Miranda Patron here back to do another, let's do a flower design today. Um, here I have some of the nice black stone from Lake Erie that really helps the colors pop to have a black background. So I'm going to be doing that on this today. And I think the first thing I'm going to do is show... The brushes that I'll be using here, this one is an angle spot detailer from Princeton, and then this is one of the liner brushes from US Art Supply, and I'll mainly be using those to make the flower today. I have a couple other of the older angle spot detailers that are the same size, just less of a point, but they're still the same type of paintbrush here. Here's one that my kids got a hold of and left in the water so the paint has cracked but it still works so we still use it. Um, Alright so I think the first color that I'm going to start off with is this awesome white pearl metallic from Deco Art, and I'm going to make that the center of my little flower design here. And if you're using dotting tools, then you want to just use one of the larger ones to make a bigger dot in the center. And I like to do stuff like flowers and other designs on stones like this because you can put a stem or add to the design and it kind of gives you something to do with rocks if you can't get stones that are perfectly circle, or at least remotely circle. Um, then you can do these kind of designs on other shaped rocks. Now there have been a couple of times where I said I don't like to use a lot of the other types of paints. They don't make dots really well, but I have found a couple colors from the Apple Barrel that are pretty decent. Um, they still are a little tackier, so it does take a little time to figure out how to work with it. It does kind of stick as you put it down, you really have to kind of pull all the way up so you don't make a mess of your dots, but they they will work. And these, especially for smaller dots, um, you're not putting down as much paint. It's less likely they're going to be a big glob. So I'm going to use this China Blue just because I really like the light, 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 light pale, almost, I don't even know, I guess the light turquoisey color of it. But I haven't been able to get that exact color that I want with mixing lately. So I found it in the store. We're going to try it. And if you're using dotting tools, just go with something really small for the first dots. And you make just kind of like a plus sign for your first ones which are your 90 degree angles and then at your 45s you just fill in so if you're at all mathematic <laughs> this is also how you'll keep your symmetry like when you're doing math and you have an equation whatever you do to one side you have to do to the other so that's how you keep your symmetry too so gonna fix that little one there. Alright, so that was the China Blue and it actually looks a little lighter on my screen here. Hopefully you can see the color and after maybe I'll do the varnish at the end of this one too so you can see how the colors really pop on the blacker stones or you can even paint a black background on your stone if you don't have black stones. Um, that'll help with the colors too. Well, I've gotten a lot of questions on how come my colors are so bright but I'm really just, it's the background and or when I varnish, a lot of the times I varnish with a high gloss varnish and that really helps them pop when you take pictures of them. So, Alright, the next color I have is a spa blue and that is from the Deco Art. And it's just <clears throat> a tad darker, but it's still kind of like that turquoisey slate blue the light light and we're just going to tuck those in the spaces of the ones that we just painted now, I didn't pause in between here because they're not big dots so there's not a lot of paint but just be careful 
that you don't touch them because they will run into one another. Okay, the next color I have is Key West. And it's starting to get a little more into that green, turquoise kind of color. And I'm going to do those over the first dots that we put down around the circle. Our white pearl circle in the middle. And this stone has some little holes in it, so the dots aren't going to be perfect, but that's okay. But you can see after when we'll burnish it, everything will stay in place. If you have a stone that is porous, um, <clears throat> or it's just kind of rough even, you can always put a quick coat over it, or even a couple coats of enamel paint or something like that will help to seal in those cracks and make it easier to paint upon. Um, but I just kind of go with the stone and see how it comes out. So we'll see. <laughs> Coming close to summer, I always get addicted to the beachy colors like the turquoise in the water and some browns for the sand and turquoise is the next one I'm going to use now. But I get a little addicted to using them sometimes so I have to put them away and <laughs> use other colors for a bit because I don't know, I don't want to get bored of them and I don't want to do overkill on showing everyone the same kind of designs over and over, same color patterns, you know. So, I like to change it up a little. Alright, so, turquoise is the next one, it's just a little darker than the Key West. So we're just going kind of like a light to dark pattern. As I've said before, I don't add anything to my paints, um, <clears throat> especially the deco art. I really, really like the flow and the consistency of them for doing dots, so I have never had to add anything to them. Uh, if you were doing something like an acrylic pour, you may add some. They actually have pouring mediums now, so you could even add their own product in to be a flow aid to doing like an acrylic pour or abstract painting, but for the dots, we don't need it. They're perfect, comes out just, just fine with dotting tools or with brushes. Okay, I'm going to continue on with my beachy theme, go for some browns now. and I have a raw umber that I'm going to put in here. You may not be able to see it as well right now, but like I said, after we varnish it, all the colors really pop. And it'll flow into the design really nicely. Okay, America, uh, America, Kana, yeah. Americana from the Deco Art came out with this really nice light cinnamon, which is the next one that I'm going to use. And we'll just tuck those in there in between our raw umber. Okay, 
I think it's time for some nice sunset pinks. Okay, so I'm using Americana's Bright Salmon. Let's see, let's do... I'm going to do a little platform here for the, the next color. So I'll do a couple little dots here in between the cinnamon that we did and above the raw umber. Kind of set the stage to make a bigger dot on top. Well, it's getting close to warm weather. The motorcycles are out. <laughs> Then peony pink. I'm gonna do a larger dot with this one up above the two that we did here. <clears throat> nice big juicy pink. <laughs> And I've gotten a lot of questions in my classes lately too about how do you make a dot bigger than your dotting tool because I generally have teach people with the dotting tools. But uh, if you want to make a bigger dot you can just push the paint around more. Basically just draw a circle and then fill it in with your paint. So at the end of your stipling tool just get a really good amount on it over the ball end. And then just push it around and draw a circle just like I'm doing with the paintbrush here. I guess I can show you. Let me see if I can grab one of the dotting tools. Um, okay, so this type of tool, which people use for nail art, and a lot of people are using them now for dotting on rocks. Um, so what you want to do is just get a really good amount on the end See, it's almost dripping off and then put it down where you're gonna put your dot but then just push it around to the size that you want for your dot and they come out pretty good and that way too I mean you're not having to buy huge sets of tools if that's what you have you use what you have until you can get something else that makes the size ones that you want but just a little hint. Okay, I think I'm gonna continue with the same pink, the peony pink, and make a ring of dots around each of the larger ones that we made. And sometimes too, if these dots are wet, I'll sometimes just grab from some of the paint from in the middle too. You see me do that? I'm not doing anything special. I'm just grabbing extra paint and being lazy about not reaching over to my palette. <laughs> also, too, if you want the dots to get smaller as you go around, you just let less paint come off. Your, or, yeah, you start with the larger ones at the top, and then as you work around, you'll have less paint by the end, obviously. So. The dots will get smaller on their own, and if you're using brushes, you just kind of do it a little bit lighter and push down harder to get the bigger ones. But it works the same as your tools, just they'll get smaller as you go around because you have less paint loaded in the brush. And you'll get a good feel for how much you need for certain size dots. The more you do it, it just takes practice. Thank you. 
I apologize to those of you who are a little frustrated if I have to turn the stone, but I am still working on that skill with being able to keep the stone in one place and paint all the way around. I just don't like to drag my hand through a wet design. But I know most of you said that you didn't mind if I turn the stone as we go in the videos, but sometimes we just gotta do what we gotta do. One thing too is I can tell right now there's a little straggler hair on this one that is uh, creating a little mischief with the paint, but you can just trim those off with your bristles, from your bristles, and then they won't be in your way anymore. Kind of upkeep on the brushes is an important thing, which I'm not always the best at doing because I have awesome children who like to be creative as well. <laughs> but we're still learning how to take care of stuff. So. There we go. So that's our last little peony pink. Okay, I think I'm going to use that salmon up too and to do another round. I think that helps too if you bring your colors that you've used in the center out within your design kind of helps uh, create a cohesive design so that you're keeping kind of your theme and it's just a different direction to go in I mean if you use a ton of different colors throughout the whole thing it'll look really festive and I've seen some great designs that never go back to the same color so it's not impossible to do just depends on what you like and what you're going for for your design. Not sure if you can see it on the screen, but there's a cat hair in my dot here. I'll have to get the, a pair of tweezers and pull that out after. It's not usually handy to keep them close by so you can grab things out like that. But <clears throat> one of the joys of being a pet owner, it's little kitties, their fur just goes everywhere. I've caught him sometimes even sitting on my drawing racks. <laughs> Don't know why. Maybe because it gets sun in the early morning. He likes to just sit up there. But unfortunately, wet paint and cat fur do not go well together. In either direction, on the piece or on the cat. <laughs> So now I purposefully put this off center, oh sorry, off center so that we have room to put some sort of stem over here for our flower design. I think that's kind of the direction I'll go in. I kind of like that. Um, but first I need to debate whether or not we want to add more to this. Okay, so I think I am going to add some yellow just to give it that extra bright pop. 
as many of you know, I really love color, so <laughs> the brighter the better. Um, so I have this buttercream I think we'll try. And I'm going to show... I made a mistake on a design once, or I shouldn't say, we don't usually make mistakes, right? It's just a different direction to go in with your design. So <laughs> I thought it was a mistake, but I ended up turning it into a different way to do a design. So I'm going to show you one that was done already. So the purple dots here, sorry, my shaky camera, right here, I was a little overzealous and I put them too close together so they started to bleed into one another. And so I just decided to put dots in between and it comes out to this really neat kind of chain link effect. So since that oops, I've incorporated it into a couple of pieces and I think I'll, I'll show you how to do that here with our yellows. I think we'll do the yellow, the buttercream first. And I'm going to start just at the outer edge of where these petals are. Just to kind of give myself an idea of where I stand for how many I can push into the design or if I want to come farther out. That's a nice addition to this. So let's see how many. So because we're going to do the same thing all the way around, you kind of have to check your design to make sure you can fit the same amount all the way around without having to crowd things in. It's like I, d I usually don't measure or anything, so I just kind of eyeball it, I guess is a good way to say it. Just eyeball it all the way around in all the same spaces just to make sure they're all gonna fit. Cause you don't want that's the worst is when you don't you don't want to crowd the dots. And it's not always perfectly aligned or perfectly sized out all the way around. Unless you measure. If you measure you can make it closer to the sizing that you want. But on stones I find that difficult because we're not it's not a perfect circle or perfect square. It's not uh, as easy to measure. Alright, so I think I'll go one more out. Just so we can really get an idea for how this design can go. Plus I really like this yellow. <laughs> so like I said, make sure it fits all the way around. This would be my closest spot to be a problem out here. Now I'll wait for that to dry, and then we can add to the design with the interlinking color. So we'll have to pick that up. Actually, because of the space we have, as the more I'm looking at this, I might even add a couple more on the sides here. It just kind of fills in a little to make the the design a little more cohesive. Have it come together rather than having things sticking out all over, which looks cool too, but this is just the feel I got for this one. So. And then maybe even, since I don't like sitting watching paint dry, <laughs> maybe I'll just work on the stem while this dries. I think that is what I'll do. So one of the cool things about having a back, black background too is you can etch on to the stone or to even black paint. Um, 
so you don't have to erase, do erasure marks or anything like that. You can just kind of wet it or paint over it and then when you varnish it, it'll disappear. So this is a little better. This is a doubting tool that I bent on my own and then I actually broke the end off of this one. So it's pretty sharp. So I use that a lot of times, you'll see, to etch designs in if I need to. Um, just so you can see where where I'm going to go. But also you can kind of gauge it for your, the size if you want to add leaves in. Do I want to add leaves? Nah. So if I decide not, then I can just wet it and they go away. But then this just kind of gives you a fun idea to get visualize where I'm going with the pattern. Maybe that's a better way to see it all in one here. All right, so I think I'm gonna go with this really nice ocean green for the stem. That's from Deco Art. And we'll just follow the line that we made. And your stem doesn't have to be shaped like this. You can do it any shape you want. Add leaves, don't add leaves. This is just where I felt like going with this stone. So this angled brush is from Princeton, I said earlier, but U.S. Art Supply also makes a really nice, ang nice angled liner that I have as well. I just don't have it in front of me here. Um, but it's basically, it looks like the liner I showed at the beginning and then it's just angled. But you can also make your own tools angled and you can see that in one of my videos I have listed for subscribers um, where you can bend your own tools, your own dotting tools, your own paint brushes. I personally like it because you can see, I can see what I'm doing, especially when I'm doing videos Then I have the camera in the way and all these other things, but I can see what I'm doing as I'm painting. You know, a lot of the tools you have to hold vertical straight up and down and you can't really see if you're touching other ones other dots or if you're touching the side of something or if you're getting it exactly where you want it to go so I just find this really helpful so that I can see where I want to go with the I'm gonna pull this design out a little bit farther and I just want to use the stone all up kind of balance it out a little and as with the other ones if you want it to go smaller you can just let the paint run out off your tool okay so now that a lot of the inner dots are dry we can go back to kind of add some density to the design and you don't have to you can leave the open spaces in there and leave a little bit of negative space or I think that I'm gonna fill in a little bit with some of the lighter colors so that very first China blue just doing some really tiny tiny ones Just in the center there. And then maybe even some of that pearly white.
Okay, I think I'm actually going to use the pearly white to do <clears throat> what I was telling you earlier with the overlapping design. And I think our yellows are dry enough now that I can do that to show you. What I did was I had two run together, so these were the so-called mistake was two dots had gotten too close, so I wanted to cover it up because I couldn't get them off. So what I did was take another color and just connect the two in the middle. It can be a lighter shade of what you're already using, like a lighter yellow, or like here we're doing white. The purples, I just did a lighter shade of purple. Like that, and we're just going to do it in between all the yellow dots. Like that. You can see it makes a little bit of different design. And it gives you another thing that you can use for your mandalas. I miss this one. I think you come up comes out so kind of like a pleasant surprise <laughs> I think too I'm gonna pull the turquoise to add some density to our stem and it's a little lighter so it's kind of like a highlight along the stem I hope you had fun watching this. I really enjoy all the feedback and comments that are coming in and I love trying to answer questions to help you out. If you like my videos please click the thumbs up and if you're looking for more you can always subscribe and get the latest videos that I have coming out and see all the old ones that I've done. And Please, constructive feedback, I'm open to it if there's something that you didn't like about the video. There's a few where I had to use older music that didn't come out so great. <laughs> so I got some good feedback on that. Or if you have questions, I try to answer them as soon as possible. And uh, yeah, just hope you're enjoying creating as much as I am. And I love being able to share this with everyone. So let me know what you think. I'm going to pause it here and hopefully be able to varnish it with the time I have left here on this digital block. Okay, so I have waited 24 hours, so this little guy is dry, thoroughly, and we're going to varnish him now so that you can see how these colors pop on the dark stone. And I use, almost solely, unless I can't find any, Liquitex varnish. And this one is fantastic because it's actually waterproof, UV resistant, um, so your colors won't fade even if you put these outside. And as I've said in the past, it's a pretty good protectant. I have stones in my garden that we've actually hit with the lawnmower and it didn't even take a chip out of the paint. So the lawnmower blade wasn't super happy about it, but the paint <laughs> on the rock stayed. So I think that's a pretty good testament for how good this product is. So I shake it up pretty decent and I only apply it with sponge brushes just because that way it goes on pretty decent and you don't get lines in it and it just goes on smoother and quicker. 
Um, that way you don't have to work it too much. The thing you don't want to do is work it too much because then you'll get bubbles in it and, <laughs> excuse me, it just won't get good coverage. So the thing that you also have to be careful of with the sponge brushes is if you just keep pushing on it and working it a lot, it will start to foam up. So I just give it a few strokes enough to just kind of cover over the stone and we'll be done. So I will show you that now. So a lot of times too when I have a larger stone like this, I actually just pour it right on the stone, but I'm also going to put some in the brush. See if I can adjust my camera here, yeah. So I actually just kind of take the brush and dump it into the brush also. And I get it pretty soaked. Because like I said, I just want to have good coverage so you don't have to work it too much. So then we're also going to pour it directly on the stone. It's a little bigger, so maybe a little bit more. <clears throat> and then we just give it a good couple of swipes. And I do have it on a paper towel here, which you don't want to leave it there to dry because it will stick to your paper towel and then that's just a mess to get it off. So. There. So I see I have a few bubbles. I'm just going to gently kind of wipe them away so that they don't stay. Or you can even just pop them like this. And now I'm going to let it dry on my drying shelves. So if you don't have nice drying racks or shelves, you don't have to have anything expensive. Um, I just picked these up at Walmart. I'm pretty sure they just go in the refrigerator or in your cabinets if you want extra space. They were 10 bucks for three, like a small, medium, and large. And they're great for drying stones on because they really get a lot of good air and you can just put a paper towel or something under it and that way it won't drip on the surface that you have. Alright, so here is my latest crop of stones getting burnished. They're drying now, but you can see how bright the color looks with that. And it's, I do like the matte look as well, and they do make a matte varnish in this, but you can see the difference from, I mean the colors are still really bright on this, but the difference from the gloss to an unvarnished stone, you can see the difference. So it really helps the colors to pop and it protects your artwork. So again, I hope you found this helpful today. If you like my videos, please feel free to share them. And I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Have a great day.